this is not, it should be said, a general phenomenon across the Protestant world. The Netherlands, for example, is almost entirely untouched by abolitionism. It preserved slavery until 1863, longer than almost any other European power. Protestant Denmark, whose slave economy was modest, does have the honor of being the first state to outlaw the transatlantic slave trade in 1792. Very much the personal initiative of this man, Count Ernst Schimmelmann, the Danish Minister of Finance, and himself a slaveholder. He'd been moved by the piety of some of his slaves, and he hoped that by ending the trade, he would force masters to treat their slaves better, since dead slaves couldn't be so easily replaced. Unfortunately, the 1792 law allowed the trade to continue for a further 10 years as a transitional measure, and naturally, Danish slaveholders spent the decade importing record numbers of slaves. In the main, though, abolitionism is an English-speaking drama. First, British Quakers and Methodists, then American Methodists, Baptists, and Presbyterians. The traditional starting point is a 1772 lawsuit which established that any slave setting foot on English soil was immediately freed. In 1777, the, the briefly independent Republic of Vermont adopted the world's first constitution which outlawed slavery. And in Britain, a campaign against the slave trade materialized with bewildering speed in the late 1780s. The petitioning effort against the trade which swept the country gathered some one and a half million signatures between 1787 and 91, that from a population of around 12 million. Nothing like this had ever happened before on that scale. And British abolitionists almost succeed in that first headlong rush. In 1792, William Wilberforce's bill to abolish the British slave trade passes the House of Commons by 230 to 85, only to fail in the House of Lords. And that turns out to be the high watermark. The panic spiraling around the French Revolution made it a bad time to mount an idealistic campaign about human equality. And worse, a slave rebellion in the French colony of Saint-Domingue, that's modern Haiti, produced a wave of atrocity stories which made abolitionism look dangerously naive. But rather than crumbling, British abolitionists knuckled down to a further 15 years of campaigning, mixing the hard graft of building and sustaining a mass movement with the tortuous intricacies of parliamentary manoeuvring. And finally, in 1807, for a brief moment, the mass movement, the legal arguments, the military interests, the shifting party political forces all align, the act is passed, and Britain bans a huge and lucrative trade, which was one of the props of its own global dominance. 